Right. Good morning. My name is Stephanie Camella. I'm here uh, for brain training with PD Active. This is the last class uh, um, in April, which means it's the last class uh, focusing on breathing mechanics um, in our breathing series. This whole month, we've been creating more space in our rib cage for breath expansion. So allowing our ribs to open up for full inhales. And then also allowing for that full exhale, letting the, so as we open up the ribs for an elastic opening, we have this elastic recoil that helps with exhale. We've also talked about a few other aspects of breath that are important, like pelvic floor mobility, um, being able to bring the arms up overhead to expand that, creating space in the tubes that air flows, your nose, your mouth, your throat. So we've covered a lot of a lot of different concepts today. We're going to wrap it all up in sort of a another uh, class exploring all of those aspects, and then hopefully you can come away from this series with a few drills that you would like to um, keep in your routine as we move into a different theme next month. Um, if you're joining us on the recording, just make sure you have pillow and a ball for us to to work with. Let's start with our pre-class check-in. It's always good to feel what our body is is feeling like at the beginning of class and then we do our interventions and then we feel how those interventions created a change in our body so you can do this seated or standing seated or standing close your eyes if that feels right for you that helps you hone into your body a bit more and just breathe casually taking note of which portal you feel your air entering and exiting it's either your nose or your mouth maybe it's the same portal through both the inhale and the exhale or maybe you alternate or have some sort of difference there notice the quality of breath as it enters through that portal does it feel like it's restricted congested constrained fluid Notice where that air fills in your body. Does it drop into your chest? Do you feel it in your upper back? Do you feel it in your ribs? Do you feel it in your belly? Do you feel it flow all the way through your pelvis or maybe even your feet? And even just at the beginning here, seeing if we can pull that breath into an area that is different than what your default is. So if your default is the breath in your chest, see if you can pull that breath somewhere else into the back of your ribs, maybe into your belly, experimenting with a few different places there into your chest. into the back of the ribs, into your belly, into your chest, into your right rib, into your left rib, into both ribs but behind you, and then into your belly in front. And then just breathe normally. Making a mental note of where that breath felt challenging to, to bring into, where, which area or region did it feel challenging to bring your air? Maybe we'll work on that a little bit today. See if we can Im improve that. And lastly, focusing on this, the timing of your breath. The amount of time that you spend on an inhale versus the exhale. And you can have it even just a, an easy, like I spend more time on the exhale than I do on the inhale. Or if you wanna quantitate it with a time, like a number. And then noticing how long you feel yourself in vacation mode 
which just means no air in your lungs and how much, how long you spend in suspension, holding your breath between the inhale and the exhale. and the depth of your breath as well. Sometimes it can be kind of shallow, especially if we're in our fight or flight mode with the shallow breath. Very good, David, I see it. All right, let's go ahead and make our way down to the floor. If you're not already, well, not, none of us are uh, laying down quite yet. So we're gonna lay down on the mat We're gonna do some general movement to get just things flowing and then um, we can do some work for opening up our lungs specifically. But you know, my breathing classes, they aren't inhale, exhale classes, they're movement-based. All right, so let's, let's start by lying in a hook line position. So your feet flat and your knees bent. And then go ahead and bring those arms up. Ooh. I was just going to say it's like a body yawn, and then I actually yawned. You're <laughs> still bringing your arms up overhead past your ears. Still. All right, big body yawn. You can grab onto your wrist and push your arms out longer, further out, and then bring the arms down by your side with an exhale. Float your arms up overhead. Inhale, expand in your chest, almost arch your back off the ground. And then exhale, ribs drop down, hands come down to your spine. <laughs> Inhale, the arms come up. Ribs come up, arch the back. And then exhale, pull your arms down by your side. Good, we'll do this a few more times. Inhale, arch. Shrug your shoulders up towards your ears. Let your ribs come up, 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 and then exhale. Good. Bring those arms up overhead. And then on the next exhale, we're gonna curl our spine off the ground, looking, lifting your head and shoulders off the mat, pressing your low back into the floor. A little crunch. Inhale, arms up overhead, go into reverse of that, and then exhale, ribs drop down, low back drops down, curl yourself up. Very nice. Inhale, pair with the breath pattern. Inhale, arms come up, expand. Exhale, curl through. Nice work. Two more. Inhale. Exhale. Notice how the exhale helps you get a little higher. Last one. Inhale. And exhale, beautiful, and release. Arms come down by your side. Take your right leg and then cross it over the left thigh. We're gonna pull that left thigh in towards your chest. Pull it in, figure four stretch it's called, and then rock yourself right and left. So you have a stretch on that right outer hip, deep rotators of your hip. If it's challenging to grab onto your knee, you can just leave your foot flat and let your knee go right and left this way. So a couple options. And if you're ready, we'll switch to the other side. So one leg's gonna come across. You can either keep the foot down and let your legs rock this way or grab onto the supporting thigh and rock right and left from here. Nicely done. Let's go ahead and roll onto your side. Make a pillow with your bottom arm. You know my favorite pinwheel stretch. Reach the top arm forward, bring the, the chest down to the mat. Spiral the arm up and around, rotate your heart open to the ceiling, circle the arm down past your hips, and then around in front of you. 
up and around. Now, super vague to start. I'm just giving you sort of a general idea of what the movement looks like. Notice in your body, do your hips like to rock with you or do they stay put? There's no right or wrong. Just notice what your body does by default. And then everyone together, we're gonna try to get those hips to move, whether or not that was default. So definitely getting your hips to move. Maybe when you come forward with the arm, the knee slides forward, bring the arm back, pull the hip back. Slide the knee forward, reach the arm forward, pull the arm back, slide the knee back. We're gonna keep going through these big circles in the arms. Now let's go with a stable hip where we keep the knees relatively stacked over each other, the hips relatively stacked over each other, and the rotation is more localized in your thorax, in your spine. Maybe last one. Beautiful. From here, we're gonna take your top leg and slide it out. So you're gonna slide it out either straight or bent. Push yourself up. And we're now in this Z sit or side sit. So we went from laying down to Z sit, side sit. Let's do that a few more times because I think the first one you were like, what does she want me to do? So we're just gonna take that leg, stack them up, slide it back, push off the ground and come into your Z sit or side sit. So this would be a Z sit where you have the legs unstacked and staggered. If this is a more comfortable position for you, that works as well. Pick, pick your poison there, okay. All right, let's get everyone on the same page though. I want everyone to have their legs off to the left side so that I can cue everyone the same way. Yeah. All right, everyone's gonna have legs off to the left. We're gonna grab either your foot, your shin or the floor, bring your right arm straight up towards the ceiling. And I know for some of us, this is a challenge just to get here. So this is where you'll be. Otherwise, if you can go a little bit further into a side bend to expose and flare all those ribs, go for it. And then we're just gonna cartwheel. This hand comes down, we bring the other arm up. This is simple. This is like a side plank. Bring it over. This is where we get the rib stretch and the side body stretch. And then we come down and we just come into a little bit of a diagonal stretch there. I like that add up nice. I like that little add. All right, so now we're gonna add a rotation onto your side stretch here. So hold, leaning over to the left. Take your free hand down on your knee, look towards your left hand. You're gonna push through the left hand. I'm sorry, push through the left hand and pull with the right. Let me say that again. Push through the right hand pull with the left, come back down, circle the arm forward, up, and find the diagonal. Let's, let's try that again, huh, team? <laughs> we go up and over, free hand comes down onto your knee. We're going to pull with the previously free hand, which would be your right hand, and push with the left. Circle up and come into your diagonal one more time. Up and over, side stretch, grab on, push, pull. It just creates more of a hollowing, more of a twist. Nice job, Carrie. And then bring it in and around. Nice job. Let's swing the legs to the right. We're gonna do the same sequence with the legs to the right. So you can either be in a Z sit or your um, side sit. Great. Side stretch over the top or straight up. If you have it in you to go into a little bit of a side bend, go for it. Try to keep your heart open towards me. So that arm is pulling back towards your ear. 
Good. And then bring it back into your diagonal. Let's just go from side to side to start. We won't get the rotation quite yet. Make sure you nail your side bend. Good. That's it, Bill. I like that. Just work. Yep. There you go. All right. We're going to add the rotation. Hand comes down on your knee. Push, pull. I'm not going to even try to say the right, left side. There's a push, pull dynamic in the arms that helps you hollow out your belly. Come forward with that free hand up and over and counter stretch. Yeah, good. Up and over. Inhale into that rib cage. Pull in. Forward with that free arm and release. Nice job. Let's have us come down onto the mat on your side again. You're gonna do the side that you did not do last time for your this pinwheel stretch. Make sure you do the side that you did not do last time. I didn't keep track for you. Great. Once you get there, go ahead and start the circle. The arm comes all the way forward. The chest comes down to the mat. We circle the arm up and around, all the way back. Sweep down towards the hips, circle through, up and around. As you're working through the set, you're noticing for yourself, do you let your hips roll or do they stay static? Just what is the default? What is the default? And then everyone together, if you're not already, let's let your knees slide along one another. So the knees slide forward, the hip slides forward, and the knees slide back, the hip slides back. Sweep forward and sweep back. Nice job. Forward and sweep back. Let's go last one here of the moving legs. This time we're gonna stack the knees and the hips relatively on top of each other. Then when we pinwheel through the shoulder, it's more localized in your spine. Oh, you may not get back quite as far because we've taken out the lower half of the body. We're not ugh, allowing that lower half to contribute to the rotation. There you go. One more time. Awesome, nice work. All righty, press yourself up. We're gonna come into hands and knees position next. Quadruped. We're gonna go, toes are gonna touch together and the knees are gonna go really, really wide. If you're on a yoga mat, I recommend turning yourself so that your knees can go really, really wide and you're not restricted to, um, the width of the yoga mat that you're, yeah. So like if your yoga mat was like that way, like turn to, yeah. All right. So we're gonna come down onto the elbows. And we talked about pelvic floor mobility and it's a uh, relationship to breath. So we're stretching the pelvic floor here. We're gonna sit the hips back towards your heels. Now, when you sit your hips back, I want you to try not to let your low back round. Okay, try not to let your low back round. Slide your hips back and widen through your sit bones. And then rock forward over your elbows. Sit the hips back, widen through your sit bones. Like stick your booty out. Maybe even keep your eyes up. It'll cue extension in your spine. There you go, good. And if you have a mirror or you have your camera set on yourself, you might be able to see, oh, am I rounding in my low back? Does it, it's called a butt wink when you let your hips fold underneath you when you sit back. Yeah. Nice. Let's go two more here. Excellent, nice job. And then come up onto your elbows and bring your knees back together. 
We did this one last week. We're gonna slide one foot out to the side. If you have a wall, that's really nice to use or like the, even a leg of a coffee table or something to wedge your foot up against something. Not necessary, but it's helpful. Try to have your foot facing forward so you're not in a turnout here, but your foot's facing forward. And bonus points if you can keep your foot flat as opposed to being like on the side. Okay. From here, we're gonna rock back and forward, stretching the inner thighs. Back and forward. Very nice. If this is a challenging position to get in, you can also hold on to a chair in front of you and do the same thing, rocking back and rocking forward. It might be a little less aggressive, <laughs> that inner thigh. Yeah, there you go. Good, okay, this is gonna be a big stretch here. We're gonna bring the hands out. Whichever leg you have out to the side, we're gonna take that same hand and thread it underneath and drop that shoulder towards the floor. Press, I have a Charlie horse, <laughs> there we go. Press through the ground on your opposite hand to help you rotate open towards your foot. You're gonna bring that free hand up towards the ceiling and look at it. Good, inhale here. Exhale, squeeze out all the air as you twist into your thread. It's like you're wringing out a sponge. Good, and then inhale, rotate open. Oh, this is vestibular, isn't it? Drop in. Exhale as you twist in. Inhale to expand open. We're gonna do one more time, thread it through. Exhale. And inhale. Nice work. And release, let's tuck that leg back in. Go ahead and come back off of your hands, either low kneeling, high kneeling, whatever, and just roll out your wrists for a second. We did the same series on the other side, right? Here we go. Hands and knees. Foot out to the side. If you used a wall last time, just spin yourself around so you can use the same wall. Try to get your foot to face forward and uh, your foot flat, right? And forward back rocking. Woo! This side's a little tighter for me. Yeah, very nice. All right, and we're gonna take the hand of the side of the leg that's out, thread it underneath. That would be the exhale if you wanna start to get the breath pattern. Push down, open up for the inhale and exhale thread. Nice, inhale, open. Looking at your hand the whole time, you can get a little bit of that visual and vestibular work. Excellent job, one more time. Inhale to open, exhale to thread. Nicely done, good. All right, let's grab your ball and your stack of pillows. We're gonna do a little bit of breath expansion into our back body. So the stack of pillows is gonna go underneath your hips and the ball is gonna go right at the base, uh, I feel like nipple line, I guess. And so we talked about at the beginning of class, the different areas that you could breathe, the regions that you could breathe into. And we can localize breath a bit more by um, using tools or our body, putting ourselves in positions that block off the other options so that the only option left 
is to breathe into a specific area. So by putting the ball underneath your chest, it limits the amount of chest breathing you could do by being on your stomach. It limits the amount of belly breathing that you can do. And so the only option really left is this posterior rib breath behind, okay? So we're going to come down onto your hands. Uh, come all the way down your hands. I'm going to keep my head up so I can keep watching the screen. And feel when you inhale, feel how there's pressure underneath your sternum. Maybe it's uncomfortable even. It's probably even more of a reason to mobilize that area with the ball. And with every inhale, working to send that air into the posterior, so just the back, like your flanks or your mid back. Two more breaths. Great. All right, this next one's a little weird, but we're down with the weirdness if you keep coming back. We're gonna take the pillow out from underneath your hips. We're gonna put the ball on your stomach and then uh, skin on ball is best. So if you can lift your shirt up. This is where it gets a little weird, especially if you just had breakfast or like just drank some coffee before this. So you may have to sort of push, almost like lift off a little bit of the ball if you're feeling like you don't like the pressure on your stomach. But literally the ball is like on my belly button. And we're going to twist your upper body over to one side. So just crawl your elbows and you should feel the ball sort of spiraling on your abs and then twist, walk your elbows to the other side. And then go ahead and just move from right to left. This is another version of the visceral massage that we did with our fingertips. Good. Mm -hmm. Nice. And then come off of the ball because we can't do that for too long. And take a breath off of the ball. Because after you come off the ball, you're like, oh my God, I can breathe and breathe again. Whew. All right, we're going to do same, similar, same, but on our side. Go ahead and lie over your ball on the side. Skin on skin is best. I understand it's a little chillier today, so you have a jacket on. But if you can pull your shirt up and have your ball on the skin, that's best and then allow yourself to drape over the top of your ball. Now we've closed off the rib on the bottom. We've closed off your bottom rib. So our best chance for taking a good breath is actually through this top rib. So go ahead and inhale and exhale through that rib a bit. As you inhale, I like to hold my hands behind my head, if that's for you. So as I inhale, I push the elbow out beyond. So I inhale, 
and I push the rib, it would be the same thing as reaching the arm. And then exhale, we're gonna curl up just a little bit and push the bottom rib down into the ball. It's like a little side crunch sit up. Inhale. And exhale. Good. Carrie, get that ball up a little bit higher, I think. It should be like really in your armpit. Yeah, yeah, there you go. And so this swivel point is like right at the base of your rib cage or almost like where uh, like a heart rate monitor or a chest strap or the base of your bra strap, you're sort of teetering over that point, okay? Again, if you want that neck support, hands behind your head. Just a little lift and lower. Now, if you're feeling spicy, you can lift the elbow off the ground completely and then it does become a little side crunch. Inhale into the exposed rib and then exhale to squeeze all of that air out of the rib. Let's go two more on this side. Inhale. And last one, inhale and side. Good, nice job. We're gonna stay right here. Your upper body is gonna stay where it is, but we're gonna walk the lower body forward so that the ball gets a little twist on your skin and then stay right there and let yourself drape. I just brought my legs forward, which kind of twisted my body on the ball. Like the ball basically like went like this on my skin. Breathe into that area. One more breath. Great. Bring yourself back up. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Um, I just noticed when I got up, my neck's feeling a little tight. We're gonna get to the neck. So if that if you're feeling that as well, we'll we'll get some relief there in a, in a couple minutes. So the ball is gonna go right, kind of like if your arm, like you could feel your armpit and then the ball. hands behind your head, but I would like you to drape over the top of the ball so you're not posting on your elbow. Slide your elbow a little bit forward so that you can drape. Take a few breaths, just static here. Allow yourself to open up in the top ribs. So again, we're closing off the bottom rib to allow that air to flow into your top rib. Every inhale, you push that elbow longer as if you were reaching your hand, but if your hand's supporting your head, you're just gonna reach through your elbow. You can shrug your shoulder up. Inhale and then exhale, float up just a little bit, pushing the bottom rib down into the ball. Inhale, slide back into your side bend and then exhale, float up. And if you wanna go into a little crunch, go for it. Inhale and Exhale, inhale, and exhale. Inhale, oh yeah, and exhale. Awesome job. Inhale, oh yeah, and exhale. Let's go two more. Inhale. Inhale. Actually, I think I cut you a little short. Let's do a few more. Or at least my body was telling me it needed a little bit more. Yeah. Maybe now, like one or two more. And of course, if your body's telling you to do more or less, listen to it.
Nice job. And then from here, remember, we're going to bring our knees forward, kind of walk your body forward. It's going to spiral your skin on the ball and then rest into it. release. All right. We did the front. We did the sides. Now we're going to do the ball in your back. This one, the, the placement gets tricky, so play around with it. You're going to place the ball in the middle of your shoulder blades. And um, again, it's tricky to get in the right spot. So you can like maybe get on your elbow and then ballpark it. And then once you're on it, you can bring either your hands behind your head. You're gonna have to use your core to balance and you can slide around until you feel like the ball is in a really nice spot in your mid back. Okay. We're going to let ourselves arch over the ball, but here's the deal. I want you to stay connected in your abdominals. So although you're going into a little bit of a back bend, you have not just like splayed yourself and let your head hang back, okay? The hands are, are, are supporting your head. You're keeping your chin relatively chucked into your chest. Lengthen through the back of your head and lower yourself down over the ball, still keeping your chin tucked. And then curl your head up and press your, uh, spine into the ball as you curl. It's like a little crunch at the end of it, okay? Lower yourself down over the ball, but keep your chin drawn in. Take a moment on the back bend and then curl on up. If this doesn't feel right for you, feel free to just lay down on the mat and take a moment until we, mo we all move on together. I know sometimes extension can get hairy for people, so. Good. Keep the chin drawn in when you arch over the top of the ball. And then curl. We're going to just do two more. Inhale on extension. Exhale on flexion. One more time, inhale on extension and exhale on flexion. Nicely done and release. Let the ball come out and lay on your back. And if your shoulders allow for it, we're gonna place the fingertips at the base of your skull. So you're not necessarily laying on your, like you're not like laying on your head back. Your head's on the floor or a pillow and your fingers are free. Okay. Just play random, like play piano with your fingers or type with your fingers on the back of your skull. Giving yourself just pressure in, in various spots. You can also create a little traction by pulling up to the crown of your head. We call this magic fingers. It's really good when someone else does it for you. But this is, the, this is what we got today <laughs> by ourselves. Or got real quiet. That means it's working. Good. Grab your ball. Hopefully, it's close by. If your ball is really, really blown up like mine is, this might be a little bit of a challenge, but um, 
we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna sit up for this one. We've done this one in the past. You're gonna take your ball to the side of your throat here and put some pressure into it. You could do this laying on your back or seated actually. So if you do not know this one, go ahead and sit yourself up. And then if you wanna, like once you get the gist of it, it's nice to do it laying down too, cause then you can be rested. So ball in your throat, in the side of your neck, not your throat, side of your neck. Twist the ball towards your earlobe. So I'm going this way. And as you do that, you're gonna look the opposite direction and draw the chin down towards your armpit. And then once you run out of space, we'll reset. So the idea is that the ball is twisting your skin on your neck, okay? So you wanna apply enough pressure and you want there to be enough stickiness of the ball on your throat here. Twist the ball towards your earlobe. Make it, you can even see it on my cheek. It's kind of pulling that area. Look down and to the opposite side. Yeah. And depending on the size of your ball, how blown up it is, mine's like really blown up. See if you can get some different areas. So you don't always have to start in the same spot. Like if you can tuck it into maybe like more back here, starting back here. Ooh. Okay. And then just move your head around, check your neck range of motion. We're going to, of course, do the same thing on the other side, skin on skin, skin on skin, ball on skin. <laughs> or if you, if you don't have a ball, you can do this with your fingers too. You just pull the skin off and twist. The other day I was at the airport and I was doing like a visceral massage on my stomach. <laughs> I thought of this because I was like, oh, if you don't have a ball and you're in the store or whatever, and you want to just play with your neck skin. Um, but anyways, I was at the airport and I was doing like a visceral thing on my stomach skin. And this guy was like, are you okay? Because I was like kind of clenching my stomach and I was like, oh yeah, like I'm fine. I'm, <laughs> I'm good. I know it looks weird. <laughs> All right, so pressure in, twist towards the earlobe. Looking to the opposite direction and even dropping the chin down just a little bit. With these ones, it's nice to sit up really tall. So if you feel yourself slouching, sit up tall or lay on your back, which is nice because it automatically puts your spine in a good alignment if you're laying down, right? Oh. Woo. Mm -hmm. Finding a new spot every time. And then after, oh, I got a nice little crack. After that last one, just turn your head, check your range of motion, see if that made a difference. That one always makes a difference for me. Next, we're gonna go into our clavicles, our collarbones, because this is where our lungs are actually suspended. I don't know if I've said this before. So if you have your lobes, your like lung lobes here, they're kind of like suspended like earrings from the front part of your neck muscles, they've got these like ligaments that hold them in place. They're called suspensory ligaments, the plural ligaments. So we're going to just affect a little bit of those suspensory ligaments that come in the front of the neck a little bit more than we already have. They travel right underneath your collarbone. So we're gonna try to hook our fingers into there. All right, we're gonna lift the shoulder up, lift the shoulder up towards your ear. That's gonna create a little bit more of a hole that you can stick your fingers in. Stick your fingers in there. 
If you need more slack, turn your head towards that direction. You should be able to like actually get your fingers in there now. And then slowly release your shoulder down and maybe turning your head forward. This one gets gnarly. So that one's, that's kind of normal and start to look the other direction and drop the shoulder down. Try to keep your fingers in the hole. <laughs> yeah, and then we'll reset. So chin, shoulder up, fingers in the little cave there. You can even breathe into it. Maybe you can feel your lung with your fingertips. It's that hard thing that touches your fingertips. And then drop the shoulder and rotate. Oh, this one's gnarly. Yeah. Okay, one, we'll do two more. I know these ones are, I don't know. These ones never get easy. Inhale. And last one. Hopefully by the last one, it got a little bit easier. Okay, same thing on the other side. Shoulder up, look towards it, gives you some slack to find the collarbone. The side's tighter for me, so harder to find. And then drop in. Shoulder drops, turn your head. Good. If you have like longer nails, this one can be a little bit harder too. So using the edge of your finger so your nail's not gouging. Four times total minimum. Okay. One more time, looking towards the side that you're working to re reset and then look away from the side. Good, and then release. Place your fingertips at the middle part of your collarbone so your collarbones meet here at the sternoclavicular joint. We're just gonna do a circular motion here. Switch the direction of the circle. The act of rubbing your skin, just the skin tugging is really, just that simple act is impactful for your nervous system. Okay. Let's roll the shoulders up towards your ears, circle them back behind you, drop them down to the mat floor, lift them up. You can do this still laying back, remember too. All this can be done on the floor on your back. Mm -hmm. Good, one more time. Great, I know that we have used our hands in our neck, <laughs> but we're gonna bring them on our face here. I want you to take the, you can take middle and, and index finger right here underneath your eyes and push it up towards the eye socket and then out to the side. Right here, push up to the eye socket should open up your nasal passage and then out to the side. Good, and work the inhale, especially as you split the fingers. Hopefully you have more uh, opening in that tube. It's like, a, what are they, those called nose strips? Those nose bridge things that like, Good, one more time. Good, and last one here, we're gonna go root of tongue massage. 
the thumbs come back to the corner of your jaw and they slip right underneath the jawline forward, giving you an underbite. And then you can slip it back to the corner of the jaw. There you go, Aline. Yeah. Good. And one more time. Great. All right. Go ahead and find your same position that you started in today, seated, standing for your post-class check-in. And go ahead and wiggle through a few movements or areas that normally you feel tight in or at the beginning of class if you felt tight in, like your shoulders, your neck range of motion. If you have rigidity in one of your arms, maybe reach them up overhead and see how that felt. Wiggle out in your torso. Maybe even weight shift in your hips if you're standing. Just general movement. Feel how your body moves in comparison to at the beginning, but maybe more so you know your baseline just as you exist. And then close your eyes and bring yourself back into your breath. Notice which portal your inhale and exhale goes through. Science is showing nasal breathing is a more preferred portal due to the biochemistry that happens with nasal breathing. Notice the uh, quality of the tubes that the air passes through congestion, fluidity, restriction or openness and where that air fills in your body. Where is the air naturally going? And then we'll go through that drill where I'm gonna name the area that I want you to inhale into and we'll see how that feels. So let's inhale into your chest. Inhale into your back ribs. Inhale into your belly. Inhale into your chest. Inhale into your right rib. Inhale into your left rib. I realize I'm going really fast. Inhale into your belly. We'll do that one more time through. Chest breath. Right lung. Left lung. Belly, good, and then breathe normally. If you feel yourself with any dyskinesia, bring your hands together. Notice the cycle of your breath, the inhale versus exhale ratio timing the deepness or the shallowness of your breath. And we can say the urgency at which you feel you need to take the next breath. Can you sustain a little bit without breathing? And then feel the urge to take your inhale. Go ahead and wiggle around just this one last time or take a lap around the room if you wanna walk. Notice any last minute changes, last changes that you wanted to take note of. And then considering some of your favorite drills that we've gone through today or the last couple of weeks that you wanna incorporate into your routine or just at the beginning of the day or while you're at line in the line at the grocery store. That concludes this series on breathing mechanics. We'll start fresh in May next month with um, 
ground-based mobility. And um, I will be bringing in the brain components of that because it's gonna be a lot of coordination, a lot of thought process, troubleshooting for movement. So there's still gonna be that brain component with it. I'll turn off the recording. If you have anything to share or feedback, let me know.